What's your thoughts on government cover-ups or covert societies attempting to control humanity? Do you believe in ancient astronauts, intergalactic communication, or extraterrestrial visitations? Ever had an experience with disembodied spirits or the paranormal universe? Are these subjects fact or fiction? Each week, Tony and Eddie explore these unbelievable realities and beyond. Exclusively on Truth Be Told. Welcome to Truth Be Told with Tony and Eddie, where we believe an experience becomes truth. I'm your host, Tony Sweet, and Eddie Connor is back next week. But until then, we have back with us co-hosting world-renowned astrologer and radio personality Rachel Lang, host of Blissin' Up right here on UBN Radio, is in the house with us. And also back, Captain Ron, host of Elevate the Conversation with Dr. 420 every Thursday night at 9 p.m. on Channel 1. If you're a history buff like myself, you will enjoy today's show because... It has mystery, it's mystical, and there's a lot of myth with the topic of the Salem Witch Trials. Yes, we have Frances Hill joining us today to talk about her book, A Delusion of Satan, The Full Story of the Salem Witch Trials. Frances will talk about how the horrifying episode of Salem with visceral clarity from those who fanned the crisis to satisfy personal vendettas to the four-year-old witch chained to a dank prison wall in darkness until she went mad. This is going to be a great show. I can't wait to introduce her. I know we've heard the stories about the witch trials. We've read books on the subject, but we have the author here today. She has done the research, and I'm sure we will walk away entertained, but we'll know much more about what really happened, what started the trials, and what finally ended the witch hunt. So let's welcome to Truth Be Told with Tony and Eddie, our newest friend, author and historian, Frances Hill. Welcome, Frances. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely to be on the show. You wasn't expecting all that applause, was you? (laughs) Well, first of all, I love your accent. That that I I love. So thank you for just bringing that to the table. Yes, (laughs) that part's easy. (laughs) Yeah. For me, I just have the country accent, so it's not so... Not but, so, but we have yeah. some diversity and, you know, accent it's true. diversity it's here, true. so <laughs> that's well, right. a good thing. <laughs> and uh, like I said, Rachel Lang is in the house. To, go ahead and say hello to our guest. Hello. Guests. I'm so excited to, uh, to be co-hosting today because I actually did a lot of my master's uh, thesis research on um, the witch trials of the... Of Europe the, in the middle in the early modern Ooh. period. Oh, how yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm so excited to hear what you have to say about the Salem witch trials. And then of course Captain Ron is in the house, who's equally fascinated by this whole topic. It's it's really exciting. I'm really glad to have you here. So I can tell you're not from America. <laughs> uh, so first of all, I know like Rachel brought a, a great point that that actually the witch trials a lot of them started over in England mm-hmm. first. Yep. So what was it about the witch trials or of America that uh, kind of intrigued you to even do the research write, and write the books that you have? Yes. Um, well, it, it all happened because um, in uh, 1992, um, my daughter, who was then 15, um, really wanted to go to Salem. And it's not something that I had ever particularly thought of doing. Um, I knew a little bit about the witch trials, not very much, because you don't get taught about them in in England where I grew up. Um, But I'd seen and read The Crucible, and um, I just read little bits and pieces apart from that. Um, Anyway, so we went to Salem. Um, We went to the Salem Witch Museum. We saw the show there that tells the whole story in a very condensed form. Um, And I thought that the story was absolutely fascinating. And I wanted to know much more about what had happened and how it had happened. So I went to look for a book that would uh, tell the whole story in an accurate but readable form. And I found there wasn't one. Hmm. Um, So the short form of this is that I I ended up writing it because I felt um, such a book should exist. And I was a writer. I've been a journalist for a long time, and I published two novels. I hadn't written a nonfiction book before, but um, 
uh, this seemed like a very good idea. So I went ahead and did it. And, and I, I do know more now about the witch hunts in Europe earlier because having researched the Salem witch hunts, right. um, mm-hmm. I obviously got interested in what had happened previously in Europe. But I hadn't known very much um, I probably don't know as much as, but um, well, well, I, I want to ask you a quick question. So yeah. when you when you were writing this, and, and we'll get, I, I'd like to really start from your beginning of when you when you did the research of how you know how you saw that the trials got started and everything. But before that, was there a, a, a particular woman or character or person that really stuck out to you that? that kind of took your heart because there's a, there was a lot of, you know, young ladies, old women, Mm -hmm. children that lost their lives to this, but was there somebody that really kind of stuck out to you? Well, actually the person who did, when I got stuck into the research, I mean, nobody had specially before I got right into it, but when I did, the person um, who came to mean an awful lot to me was actually a man. Hmm. Um, funnily enough, but it was George Burroughs, Hmm. who was one of the people who was hanged, supposedly for witchcraft, as an alleged witch. Hmm. Um, And he was uh, a pastor, a vicar, um, who had ministered in Salem Village, where it all started, at an earlier phase, about 10 years before the witch hysteria started in Salem Village. And once the hysteria was underway and certain men of the village were using it for their own ends, somebody they decided they were going to target and bring down by accusing him of being a witch Mm. was George Burroughs, who, because they had come to hate him for all the wrong reasons, for things to do with them, not him. You know, he'd done nothing wrong. They'd come to hate him because Mm -hmm. he was essentially a superior to them in every way and had bested them in certain circumstances. Um, And they were dying to get their revenge on him. And, And the more I read about him, the more admirable he seemed as a man. And the way he he died was was very impressive the way he um prayed and spoke before he was actually hanged and affected everybody and right. you know so i could go on about him oh no I, in <laughs> fact i just i just showed i just showed uh, it looks like his uh, headstone uh he was hanged uh, august 19th 1692 um and, and that's that's impressive that that's still mm-hmm. intact. intact. Yeah. Uh, well, let's let's go back because um, Rachel, like you said, you did yeah. studying of the witch trials of the in Europe, right? So which which one was first? Well, Europe was first, and and one of the co- questions that I I had for you is because I I didn't do a whole lot of research on the on the Salem witch trials. Mm-hmm. But in Europe, the use of torture was really, really involved in the whole testifying and witness process. Um, mm-hmm. How much of that was brought over and, and incorporated in, into the Salem witch trials? There, well, there was torture in the Salem witch trials. Um, it wasn't torture using medieval instruments, as may have been used, I think, perhaps in the... Um, the earlier witch, uh, witch, witch hunt in Europe. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, but it was torture that we would be horribly familiar to us. I'm mm-hmm. afraid today it was um, sleep deprivation, um, and well, something called which wouldn't be familiar to us called tying neck and heels, where they bent somebody over. So um, that their head was sort of down by their feet, as close as it could get. And they literally uh, tied their neck round their feet. And they kept them like that. So um, I think the, the standard was 24 hours. Mm-hmm. For but it could be for, for longer. Um, but 
Um, they also apparently just uh, tortured people with very loud noise, which might sound almost comical, but we know that that's been done in recent years, mm -hmm. you know, playing incredibly loud mm -hmm. pop mm -hmm. or rock music to prisoners um, in Afghanistan. Right, mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, so they used those methods, and, and they were using um, those methods to get people to confess, to, to make false confessions, mm -hmm. um, because they wanted them to be witnesses against other uh, prisoners that they had um, that they particularly wanted convicted. Um, and George Burroughs was one of those. They, uh, they got oh, about 55, I think, um, men and women, mostly women, um, from outside, from a place called Andover. This all gets quite complicated, but so I won't go into that. <laughs> but they got these, at this stage anyway, they got these, sort of, uh, it was about 50 people mm -hmm. that they tortured in the ways that I've just described until they got to a state where they would sign anything um, and the ministers would just write out a, a confession for them, you know, and give it to them and they'd sign it. Um, and one of the things that they would have confessed to was having seen George Burroughs and others at witch meetings um, with him leading the witch meetings, mm. because he was you know, being uh, accused of being more than a witch, a wizard who um, actually led the witches in their criminality. Mm. Um, and, and that was used in the, those confessions were used in the trial to, to convict him mm. and others, but he was the main target. So anyway, that's my answer to your question about torture. Yeah. Well, Francis, can I, can I expound on that a, a second here? Wasn't there a guy, too, an 81-year-old farmer where they just put rocks on him until he cl ah, crushed him? Yeah. And yeah, he held yeah. out because he didn't want to lose his land. If he admitted to being a witch, they would they would seize his property. So he held out and they just buried him or something like that, wasn't there? Well, what happened was that they were um, punishing him with uh, an old uh, a fashioned <laughs> means of, of, of doing this, which came from England, which consisted of lying him down on the ground and then just piling rocks on mm. top of him mm. until is, yeah. he pleaded innocent or guilty because he'd been refusing to plead. And it, it had been said that the reason he was refusing to plead is so they wouldn't be able to um, take hold of his land. Mm. But in fact, that's not, people aren't quite so sure about that now because he does seem to have made his lands over to his sons mm. um, sort of earlier than that. So it, should have, it could have been just sheer mm. cussedness. I mean, he'd just come to hate the court so much and refused to cooperate with mm. them. I mean, they had, um, they hanged his wife so they were about to at this point. They hanged her three days after he was killed with the rocks being weighed on his chest. But, I mean, he knew that she was in prison awaiting hanging. So, um, you know, um, he had a very dim view of his court that so was uh, trying the, the alleged witches, which was a special court set up just for that purpose, incidentally, here. <laughs> Not the, uh, the not just the ordinary um, uh, Massachusetts colony court. It was a special court called right. the Court of Oye and Terminate for just for dealing with the witches, mm. supposed witches. And and with uh, with that court and and when we're talking about they, uh, you know, we're using the word they for for describing, you know, the kind of the perpetrators of 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 this of this sort of. Justice, atrocity, uh, atrocity, oh. atrocity uh, you know, um, but, um, you know, what did you find, like, who was behind all of this? And then who yeah. was really motivating all of this, the witch yes, hunts? Yes, it, it's really, it's really interesting. Because at the Salem village level, the, the, the people behind it were, were certain um, 
long-term residents of Salem Village who felt that they were losing some of their power to another faction oh. and, and had come to hate them and wanted to take them down. And so they were, at, at first, they were aiming um, at them. And then it sort of broadened out and they started aiming at other people that they intensely disliked for one reason or another, including George Burroughs. But then um, the magistrates, at Salem became involved and they had their own agenda. Uh, there, there were people that they wanted to take down and they, they were the ones who actually did the interrogating at the pre-trial examinations. Um, and one of them, John Haythorne, was also a judge um, at the actual trials. But then you also had some of the leaders of the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Um, there was William Stoughton, who he became deputy governor. He wasn't deputy governor when it all started, but he became deputy governor by the May of 1692. Um, and he was, he was an ideologue, really, <laughs> Um, who passionately believed in witches, it seemed, and mm. wanting to wanted to eradicate them, and uh, couldn't see clearly, couldn't see what was actually going on here. That innocent people were being targeted um, mm -hmm. and, and sent to prison. Um, and then there were there was increase in Cotton Massa, who. Um, had been well I, sh I should say they were like the sort of theological right wing of <laughs> uh, the, the government of the day and they were incredibly influent influential although they weren't elected officials as ministers they were extremely influential I mean they were practically running things really um, and they were all in favor of something like this happening when it got started because it played to people's fears. Um, that might sound a bit familiar as well. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and it also sort of encouraged people to stick to believing in the supernatural and to take their theology terribly seriously and to cleave, you know, to, to them as leaders, um, because there were more modern influences coming in. I mean, this was happening as a witch trial. As, as witch trials, they were happening incredibly late. I mean, there hadn't been any anywhere for quite some time mm. by 1692, um, and Salem Village was a very backward place in every way. <laughs> Um, but the ministers, Cotton and Chris Mather, sort of liked it that way because that kept people um, on their side. Um, uh, so they were really pushing the witch hunt on. They were encouraging it um, until finally the point came where I had got so out of hand. I mean, it was just um, the whole colony was in a terrible state. It, it was as though a civil war had taken place. I mean, people's farms were totally destroyed because mm. they were having to go visit their relatives in prison the whole time. And um, it, the whole place was ravaged by... Uh, there were, at the height of it, there were 20 people executed, 150 in prison, and about wow. 200 wow. other people accused, although not in prison yet. And it got to a point where um, even increased matter felt um, this really kind of can't go on. And various other people started speaking up against it, and <laughs> the tide turned, mm -hmm. and it was gradually brought to an end. What, what was the population at that time? Do you know? Oh, 
oh gosh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to come up with oh, a figure. Oh, that's okay, I, I, I was just I have, curious. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know, I probably have known, but I've, <laughs> I've forgotten, I, I just it don't just, have a figure in my head. It would, yeah. uh, it would sound very small, I'm sure. I'm to sure, us. yeah, but that's what I was thinking, I was like, you know, for killings, you know, even 50, 100, whatever mm-hmm. many people were killed, you know, that's a that would be a large population Certainly Back that little in town, yeah. Exactly. Well, certainly right. in Salem Village. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So who who was the first person? What it wasn't George Bur- Burroughs, correct? Who was the first person to be tried and killed? Um, it was a woman called Bridget Bishop, um, and she'd had a reputation as a witch for a long time, for oh twenty years or more. People could get reputations for witchcraft because basically they were disliked for one reason or another. Um, and people would start saying, oh, Bridget Bishop bewitched my cow and it mm-hmm. died. You know, or my, my child got sick just after she'd come around to see us. and mm. That sort of thing. Um, and that had happened to her. Uh, I think she'd actually been tried for witchcraft once before, a long time ago, but, but let off. Um, and what seems to have happened is that the the Putnams, who were the people in Salem Village, who really got the witch hunt started and were targeting their enemies, I think they had a, had the the girls who were doing the accusing name her because she was an obvious witch suspect, and it was quite good to have some obvious witch suspects amongst the other people they were targeting who you know, would be um, very surprising witches. Um, they had to overcome a certain amount of disbelief mm-hmm. when pillars of the society were, were being named as they were. But Bridget Bishop was an obvious suspect, and, and they named her. And then um, she was the first to be tried. And what seems to have happened is that Haythorne and Stoughton and the Mathers um, decided, right, if we try her um, and convict her, nobody's going to be surprised. They're going to think, well, yep, yeah, well, we always knew she was a witch. So that's fine. That'll work fine. That'll soften them up for when we start accusing and, and uh, trying um, other people who seem much more unlikely mm-hmm. witches. Um, and it really does seem to have happened like that because she was um, hanged on ooh, uh, June the tenth. I just looked at I saw. Thank you. He's on top, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, and then the next hangings were until um, August the nineteenth. Yeah, I that's think. yeah. That was George Burroughs. That's and that was George Burroughs yeah. and about five other people. Hmm. I think. Um, no, hang on. And th- there were some in between August and 9th. I'm not good on dates. Anyway, <laughs> okay. she, her hanging <laughs> was about a month before the next lot of hangings. Um, mm. And, I, I, you know, no, no, we, no, none of them actually put this in writing, that this was uh, their plan. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just seems like you know, the best explanation for why she was tried and convicted and, ha- and hanged as early as that, and then everybody else came afterwards. So what we're going to do is we're going to take just about a minute break. We have to do a uh, commercial for our sponsor. Uh, but if you're tuning in for the first time or halfway through, this is Frances Hill. She's a, an author that wrote an amazing book, A Delusion of Satan, The Full Story of the Salem Tr- well, Witch Trials. We're going to come back with more questions. If you guys uh, in the chat room on our UBN radio or on Facebook Live, if you have a question, please put it in the comment section. We'll ask it for you. But uh, please uh, go get this book. It's fascinating. Uh, it's, I think history is such a, a great way to learn from. And like you said, a lot of similarities of what we're going through right now, witch hunts. Mm-hmm. There's one right there. Fear. Mm-hmm. Fear. Exactly. And uh, so uh, we, power. that's right, <laughs> a shift in power. So when we come back, I, I definitely want to know uh, more about uh, the religion of a lot of these 
accused, and then uh, we'll find out how it finally ended, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll find that out. So don't go anywhere. This is Truth Be Told with Tony and Eddie. I'm Tony Sweet. I'm Rachel Lang. Captain Ron. And we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. You suffer from anxiety, from depression, maybe even chronic pain. Well, listen up. Truth Be Told is going to tell you about a breakthrough program built on over 100 years of therapies used in America's returning veterans to help you successfully overcome PTSD, anxiety attacks, pain, and depression. The secret proven in study after study. Music therapy. The effects of music are nothing short of amazing. From strokes to PTSD, music has been shown to improve the quality of life. Now one of the latest music therapy programs being used in America's veteran hospitals can be yours to experience for free at home and to help your own anxiety attacks, pain, and depression. Or just relax after a hard day. It's called Whole Tones. It takes music therapy to a new level. This revolutionary program makes use of specifically designed frequencies that have been shown to stimulate your body's natural healing power down to a cellular level. If it works for battle-scarred vets, can it work for you? Well, experience it for yourself for free at SweetWholeTones.com. Like Tony Sweet, that's S-W-E-E-T. Go to SweetWholeTones.com. Now enjoy the show. All right, welcome back to Truth Be Told with Tony and Eddie. I'm Tony Sweet, and we have the lovely... I'm Rachel Lang. And the handsome... Oh, I thought the lovely was, was Captain <laughs> it could Ron. could be you, too. Well, it could right. be you, too. That's both. fine. Yeah. <laughs> I just point, happened to point to her first. That's fine. Uh, but we have on the phone, all the way from the East Coast, Frances Hill. She is an author and a, uh, an amazing author that wrote a book, A Delusion of Satan, the full story of the Salem Witch Trials. I've, you know, as a kid, we've heard about the trials. Like I said, there's so, there's not a lot of, I mean, there's documentaries and stuff out there, but it's always nice to to, to talk to the researchers that right. do the mm-hmm. that go there and, and find the information out. So Ron's going to go ahead and take the first question from you. Yeah, so. Francis, you were just saying how these these people were convicted of being witches. Can you expound about, I had read a little bit from your stuff, how, how they determined they were witches. And there's these crazy things. It feels like kids playing a game. Like, remember you played a game and you'd make it up as you went? And you went, oh, that carpet's lava. You can't do that. And you just like <laughs> make up the rules as you go. That's how these guys were. It seems like they just said, oh, we, if, 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 we ur- if, the, if the witch would urinate and we would use that to make a cake, and if the dog ate the cake, then you're a witch. And if... If, if you looked at somebody and they were having a tremor and they blindfolded the witch and you touched them, if they stopped, then you were a witch. Oh my God. Completely arbitrary yeah. things. Mm-hmm. Well, there were all, so, you know, all sorts of weird things going on like that um, in, in the community. But as far as the actual trials went, um, there were two sorts of evidence um, that were admissible in court. Um, and one was um, what for them was was hard evidence. So it's not hard at all, really. Um, it's uh, the kind that I was talking about before, where somebody would say, so-and-so sort of looked at my pig for a long time and then it got ill and died, <laughs> so she must be a witch. <laughs> and that was accepted as evidence. And it became... Um, you know, if you had a lot of people saying the same thing about somebody, it it was seemed mm-hmm. to them um, to become stronger evidence, um, although it has no basis in, in in the first place. In fact, so it's uh, clearly to us it's worthless as evidence, but it counts as evidence to them. Then another thing were, was um, if what they called puppets, um, like little dolls that they made were found in in the houses where they lived. Um, That could be evidence to a witch because you could have been using them to stick pins into Mm. to harm the people that they were supposed to represent. Um, And, oh, gosh, there were... uh, uh, George Burroughs' case, he was accused of getting his strength from the devil, because he was extremely strong, and it had been said that he'd lifted muskets with one finger, um, and oh, he, you know, he'd just done all sorts of incredible feats of, of strength, and people lined up to say that, yes, they'd seen him 
uh, do those things. Um, and we don't know whether he had or not. I mean, no doubt it was just that he was very strong, and then people exaggerated. But um, what was being said in court was that no actual mere human being could do these things. So he must have had the devil's help. So that was evidence. Uh-huh. That well, he was must be the devil. Right. Yeah. What, else could, what else could yeah. it be? Yeah. 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 So yeah. I was just going to say the other sort of evidence was spectral evidence, which is where the, the, these accusing girls who did such weird things, where they come in. Because what would happen would be the um, accused witch would stand there in the dock and the girls who were accusing them of witchcraft would go into fits they'd start screaming and shouting and sticking their tongues out, you know, to uh, an extraordinary length um, down past their chins and turn their heads round further than they could normally go um, and, oh, you know, sort of do weird things with their arms and legs. And, and the idea was that the witch was tormenting them so much with her spectre that she was making them do all these things. And what the spectre was supposed to be was, um, well, the, the, the witch's spirit in a way but that came out of her and the girls could see it, supposedly, and it looked just like the accused witch. Hmm. And it could come up to them and do these things to them. I, I mean, the whole thing is so totally weird and unbelievable <laughs> that it seems incredible that everybody sat there in court apparently believing it because it was certainly accepted um, by the, the judge and the jury you know, uh, came to the conclusion that these people were, were guilty um, so they were just under this incredible delusion like, that they were living in a, a sort of belief system about witches, hmm. which, um, to some extent, they'd always, you know, had always, they'd always lived in because everybody had, did believe in witches, right. and they believed in these things about witches, and, and those things were were used in the trials in a way that nobody had sort of seen seen them before, but they accepted them because they've been brought up to believe in this this sort of thing. Um, so those were, the, as I say, those were the two kinds of evidence that were used I- in court. Well, one thing that I, f- I find fascinating, and, you know, even today, if, if you would ever, you know, you know, I mean, if you think, talk about abortions or anything, you know, children. Children are, you know, sacred. sacred. Mm-hmm. And uh, in your book, you talk about a four-year-old witch. So is that what, was that the youngest? Ever? She was the y- youngest um, person accused of witchcraft. And she how did that happen? I mean, how would they even accuse a four-year-old and then, you know, yeah. end up killing? Well, her mother had been accused of witchcraft, and there was a belief that if a mother was a witch, her child was likely to be a witch. Mm-hmm. Of um, but yes, it was extremely unusual to to accuse a child as, as young as that. And I don't know why. I mean, nobody knows why um, she was accused, because, all right, her mother was accused, but that didn't mean to say they would necessarily accuse right. this four-year-old as well. But they decided to. Um, the, the accusing girls, um, when she was on trial, they got up to all their tricks, and, you know, they were saying, oh, her spectre is hurting us and don't stop hurting us. And it's almost like, you know, you almost feel something might have happened where these sort of 11 to 18-year-old girls um, had, for some reason, really taken a strong dislike to this particular four-year-old. Mm-hmm. And they were um, enjoying hurting her. Mm. I mean... You know, it it has been known, unfortunately, that older children can be extremely nasty to, to oh. younger ones oh, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is only 300 years ago. Though. It feels yeah. like when she's talking, like, this is 3,000 right. years ago. Right. Like, this is like happened. not that far away, yeah. Yeah. to be honest. Yeah. No. 
<laughs> yeah, we've come a long way. Or have we? In three hundred years. Or have we? Uh, well, okay, that's so. It changes. I that's, mean, it's just the forms of things that change. But that's the underlying. Right. We're, we're just the same human beings, you know? That's right. Yeah. Well, okay, uh, how did. how did Okay, because we have about, I'd say, about eight minutes left. And all right. I can't believe this is already going way fast. And so. Uh, it doesn't sound like it lasted that long, but what? No. Actually, when did it s- stop, and what stopped it? Was it uh, just they cleaned house, and they just said, "Now we like everybody else"? Or I mean, what? What well, stopped? Well, it was a, a combination of things. Um, it was thing. I, uh, everything had got out of hand, and you know, it, the whole colony was being destroyed by this, really, right. which made the colony leaders sort of feel um, perhaps this ought to stop. And the governor of the colony, Sir William Phipps, who'd been appointed by the English king, um, had got very nervous about it. He thought, uh, you know, the the English crown was going to get to hear about this and be furious and blame him mm-hmm. and um, sack him and get another governor. So he, he was quite keen on it stopping by the state. And then people who'd always been sceptical about it all but hadn't dared say anything before, started speaking up and, and writing things against the witch hunt and the court. And, you know, everything sort of came together. It was in October 1692, and Sir William Phipps, the governor, disbanded the court hmm. of OAA and Termine. Um, the witches, the accused witches were all still in prison. There were no more hangings after September the 22nd, and the last hangings um, there, there was a sense of the turning of the tide there, because the crowd seems to have been revulsed Mm -hmm. finally by what they were seeing. Um, uh, Anyway, so the court was disbanded. Um, The people in prison started being tried in the January 1693, um, but spectral evidence wasn't allowed anymore because increased matter had said that it wasn't reliable. And without the girls cavorting and screaming, and you know, um, there wasn't the, the evidence that, that there was was clearly very thin. And our oh, juries now. Um, but were not, they didn't have to be church members anymore. The, the law about that had changed. So they weren't necessarily as, as religious as they had been and as liable to believe um, what they were being told and what they were seeing. So they were letting people off. Um, people weren't being convicted. Um, a few were, and then they were reprieved by the governor anyway. And then in the May... The governor declared an amnesty, and everyone was let out of prison who was still there, Mm -hmm. except for those who weren't able to pay their prison fees. Well, you could say, hey, is that like getting your car towed every day? It goes (laughs) in. With interest. (laughs) Um, So they had to stay in, and uh, they all got out eventually. Um, Other people paid them for them, or whatever. They all got out eventually. But... It it wasn't so there was a clean sweep because there were plenty of people who still believed that the people who'd hanged had been guilty and then there were other people who just didn't know what to believe and uh, it, what had happened wasn't didn't come clear really for a long time. Um, and the, all the people who'd been um, hanged and... Others who'd been convicted, although not necessarily hanged yet, um, they were all exonerated eventually, but the last ones um, were exonerated in 2001. Wow. So wow. it wow. took yeah. a very long time. Wow. It's a long time. All right, so time is getting short. Two more questions, if you guys have any more questions. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I was going to ask, but what do you think was the actual 
thing that started the Salem stuff? Do you think it was the ergot fungus? Oh, no. No. <laughs> 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 what do the you think it was? The theory has been completely discredited. I don't agree with it either. They, these two were telling <laughs> me <laughs> that's what they thought. Oh, sure. Blame no, it on us. People, people try to make the theory because it's, it's, um, it's kind of interesting. And it's, you know, it's kind of interesting. And it, and it, it gives what seems like a simple answer, but there's nothing to it. It just didn't, you know, the, uh, ergo du- in bread doesn't have, it, it can't set off witch hunts. It, uh, you know, it's just, it's not credible. <laughs> well, what is the credible? What do you think is so the answer? What did start it, right. Um, well, I do think that it really was that uh, these two little girls who were playing at telling fortunes um, mm. freaked themselves out. They, they <laughs> were breaking e- an egg in a glass so that the egg white went into water in the glass and they were asking it to show what their husband's professions would be by the shape the egg white got into in the glass and one of the little girls thought the egg white had gone into the shape of a coffin and that completely freaked her out and she became hysterical and from my reading of it of all the you know the primary sources um, I think that she really did become hysterical in the clinical sense. And her cousin, um, who was with her, I think may well have done too. Um, and they, um, after a few weeks, they said that they were bewitched. I mean, they kept being egged on to say this by the adults around them, to just to get an explanation for why they were in fits all the time, you know, and screaming and shouting and calling about and or behaving scarily. Um, so they said they were bitched, bewitched and they accused the first people, um, hmm. Tituba and Sarah God Good and Sarah Osborne, um, who were all sort of fairly obvious which suspects type. And then a couple of other girls, in fact, uh, before that, um, a couple of other girls had got involved, and whether they caught the hysteria, as it were, or they were just joining in um, for whatever reasons, because it gave them a sense of power, or it gave them, you know, a wonderful relief from the boredom of their ordinary lives, or whatever. Um, they they joined in, and then other girls joined in. Um, until eventually there were, um, there was a sort of, about eight of them. But other people then were added on, so including some quite old ladies, in fact, <laughs> mm-hmm. as, time, as time went on. But that, um, that's how it, it got started. That was, the, you know, the trigger um, was the fortune telling. <laughs> um, right. But I think as soon as the girls um, started naming people as witches, the adults around them, you know, the father of, of one girl um, and you know, the, the father of, of another, and uncle of another, um, who were all uh, sort of very close-knit already um, and formed a faction in Salem Village um, that was essentially sort of at war with another faction. They saw this incredible opportunity for targeting their enemies. Mm. Mm. Uh, and so it went on from there. Well, I think Rachel has well, the last question. So, Rachel, go ahead. Sure, sure. I, I think it's well. It sounds like it sounds like this research took you on quite a fascinating journey. Um, was what was the biggest surprise that 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 you gained along the way or learned uh, along the way? Um, I was I was very surprised when I came to read the pre-trial hearing uh, documents, which give. Um, a verbatim account scribbled down at the time of all the questions and answers. Um, I was surprised by the, the 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 lack of any sort of justice, almost any sort of pretense of justice. I mean, the way um, the interrogators, the magistrates, were asking. I mean, 
not just leading questions, which they were, but also bullying questions. You know, they were trying to force confessions out of these people. Mm. And you could see they didn't believe for a moment they could possibly be innocent, and they didn't want them to be innocent. Mm. Um, you know, for a lot of complicated reasons, I, I haven't even been able to go into them all. They, literally a witch they, hunt. Right. Yeah. Literally. Yeah, yeah, right. literally, right. yeah. And that's yeah, where it came were, from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, I mean, I hadn't, I, I was shocked, you know. <laughs> um, and by the way the trials were run or how chaotic they were, um, the things that went on, like, you know, sort of halting proceedings for a bit while um, some of the women were taken out to be searched, physically mm-hmm. searched, strip searched, we would say to see if they had any teats on them, which um, their familiars could feed off. Wow. And then they'd all yeah. come back later, and the clerk of the court would then read out the findings, you know, wow. um, which would be things like a teat was found on so-and-so's body <laughs> between the pudendum and the anus. Wow. <laughs> and think, oh, for wow. Hey, <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, it... I, it, I, I, that was the uh, the thing that I suppose I was most taken aback by, mm-hmm. really, in reading reading those documents. I hadn't been prepared well, well, for I have that to, degree of injustice. I have to say, Francis, thank you for doing the research and writing this book and uh, mm-hmm. the other books that you've done. This is uh, so fascinating. I wish we had more time. Maybe you have to come back. I know you have other books to talk about. And I find this one fascinating, a book that you wrote, Such Men Are Dangerous. And it Mm -hmm. says, uh, uh, Paul Warwitz, Dick Cheney, and even George Bush, are they the modern-day equivalent to uh, Cotton Mather, John Hawthorne, and and then William Phipps? So fascinating. So if you guys want to check that book out, go to Amazon. Do you have a website for people to go to? Yes, I do. Yes, um, it's um, FrancisHill.net. Dot net. Perfect. Yeah, it's just the whole name, uh, lowercase, and the Francis is spelled with C E S, not C I S. Perfect. Um, Francis Hill. Dot net. And please go out and pick these books up. These are fascinating. A Delusion of Satan. You have Such Men Are Dangerous, and then you have Deliverance from Evil. I'm sure there's a, a few more. And and uh, are you going to be writing any more books in the future? Oh, gosh, I, I, I hope so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm working on something something now, which has nothing to do with the Salem witch trials, that I, I hope will see the light of day in due course. Can I put in a quick word for hunting for witches? Yes, there we go. Hunting uh, for, I knew there was yes, another one. Hunting for witches. It's, just, it's um, um, a sort of guidebook to the Salem witch hunt, and it gives everything I've been saying, it gives the whole story in relatively short form like 70 pages, um, plus um, descriptions of all the sites you can go to um, in and around Salem that have anything to do with the witch trials. So I'm delighted to be able to give that a little plug. Perfect. And if you guys tuned in halfway through or just want to hear this again, you can listen to us on iHeartRadio, listen to our podcast there, iTunes, and go to uh, YouTube and look up Truth Be Told with Tony and Eddie. All of our shows are there. You can subscribe, leave a comment, tell us who you like to see on the show, and tell us how amazing Francis Hill was today. So, Francis, yes. thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank All right, and we'll see you pleasure. soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. All right, so uh, before we get out of here, Rachel, tell everybody where to go. Go to bl- hell. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Delusions right. of Satan. That's right. That's right. So. Um, go, or you can go to Blissville. Oh, okay. yeah. Bl- Blissenup.com <laughs> is is uh is my um is my website. And um, Captain Ron. I'm at I am Doctor Four Twenty dot com or at Captain Ron. There That's you go. Twitter. Yeah. All right. Well, stick around. We have another guest coming up, uh, and so uh, go get a bathroom break, grab a drink, whatever you need to do, and we're going to take a quick break. Uh, so this is Truth Be Told with Tony and Eddie. One more time, I'm Tony Sweet. I'm Rachel Lang. And I'm Captain Ron. We're out. See you soon. Thank you.